This is Harry Jaffa Boxing Social in partnership with Empire Fighter Store. The weigh-in has just finished. I'm joined by Matthew Macklin. Where have you been all week, mate? Been waiting for you. You, you didn't attend Macklin's uh, podcast uh, a few weeks ago. You, Bank Smith, weren't on that. You've been skiing. Ever, what the lifestyle you have, Matt? Uh, well, and that I'm a missus during a couple of weeks. So, uh, congratulations, uh, congratulations. So, you know, couldn't be in two places at the same time. Congratulations, John. How does it feel? Yeah, good. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Skiing okay? All good out there? All good fun? Well, I, got, I got down in one piece. I ain't going to win no Olympic medals, but um, yeah, I can get down. Great. Great to see you as well. Um, big show, Adam Azim. Headlining Ali Pali, headlining Wembley Arena on Saturday night. Certainly making him into the big star that perhaps they've all wanted, perhaps. Yeah, definitely. Look, he's, um, we're all getting excited about him because he's producing the goods in the ring. You know, it's... Um, Television and media are always going to hype. They're always going to look for the next star. Um, and it's a long way to go. But so far, he looks the business. He's, he's, he's been blasting guys out of there. Uh, great speed, good power. Uh, he's got that confidence and that self-belief. But, but also a little backflip. And, you know, his personality is starting to grow. And, he's, yeah, he's, he's growing into the role. On TalkSport yesterday with Simon Jordan and Jim White, Simon Jordan even said, you know, we're starting to see more of his personality. Obviously, in the ring, he's an entertainer, but outside the ring, you know, spoke to Andy Clark a moment ago and Boxing News did a piece and he's mentioning his ADHD and really coming out and, and doing more and more with the media. So perhaps we're seeing more of his personality outside the ring at the moment, Matthew. Yeah, and look, there's always, you know, like it's, again, television, media, promoters, you know, it's their job to, you know, marketing, how do you sell, how do we promote uh, this guy? But the most important thing for, for anyone, for any fighter, is to be authentic, you know, because if you're not authentic, it won't work, you know. Where, and if you're authentic, like, everyone's got a story, you know, everyone's in, and everyone wants to know the real you, the real, you know, so the most important thing for Adam Azim is that he, he's authentic and true to himself, you know, he's producing the goods in the ring, he's, he's uh, achieved everything as a junior amateur, turned pro quite young, you know, like, you know, I, I'm a... We're coming down here doing the show. I'm excited to see his fight. I'm excited to see how he performs. I obviously expect him to win and win in style. But does he does he do it in a round? Does he does he is he a hard fight over the distance? And and he shows maturity. You know we don't know. But he's uh, he, you know so far every time we've watched him, he's uh, he's been exciting. That's true. We don't know, and it's becoming that where they're gonna have to just throw him in there eventually because those journeymen those building fights are not going to be there for him it seems he's getting rid of them in a round I thought Rylan Charlton was going to be a little bit more than what that was so hopefully we see more of him at the weekend but again you can't count that out Matthew no you definitely can't count it out but I don't think you need to throw him in I think that, that, that what happened he's young and you know he's got a bright future the potential's massive um, so it's important to do the job properly um, if you if you rush out, I, you know, I said it earlier to the other guy there. Was, you know, we were talking about uh, Francisco Bajardo. You know, because he turned pro around the same time as me or just before, and he was like going to be the next, like the next coming. Do you know what I mean? He was he was a top top fighter, great speed, power, everything. But they rushed him, and they got him beaten, and they got him beaten again, and in pretty brutal hard fights where he ran out of steam, and because he hadn't gone the rounds, because he was blasting everyone out, and then he was in there with a tough, durable, season pro went the 10 or 12 rounds distance and it, you know it was grueling fights for him and you know he never he never became what he should have so yeah we can all get excited but uh, as long as Shane McGuigan isn't getting too excited and as long as the matchmakers uh, boxer aren't getting too excited it's okay for us to get excited that's our job we're just fans we're just media well, you know but the, the the people guiding his career it's crucial that they keep their feet on the ground and you know I'm not saying you don't want to. You don't want to. Um, you don't want to give him fights where he's just blasting people out and he's not learning. You do want the learning fights, but you, you've got to gauge it properly. You've got to get the timing right. And I think the, the the hardest part now will be for boxer the promoters because they're going to have to pay a fortune to opponents to face him. Because I mean, good opponents. Because if you're at a level and you've built yourself up and you're on the verge of getting a a, British, a European title shot or something. Why do you want to risk your ranking against the young kid coming behind you? You don't, unless you're getting paid, unless you're getting compensated for taking the risk with money. So, boxer, I've got to find it hard to get 
you know, these are especially certainly domestically, and people who are, who are in good positions aren't going to want to fight him. So that's why they're going overseas. It is a massive project for boxer Sky Sports, Adam Azim. I think his training team in McGuigan, I think that's an excellent training team to be in. I mean, got Caroline Dubois on at the weekend as well. She wants to win a title by the end of the year. There seems to be a bit of a competition between them both. Um, Everyone compares him to likes Amir Khan and Nassim Hamid. I mean, obviously you mentioned European title. Nassim won that in his 12th fight. Perhaps looking overseas, Alan may go towards that route. Um, do you compare generations or is that just what we do as media? Do you find it a good gauge to compare different fighters in different generations? Uh, you can, but you've also got to move with the times and realise it's a different time. Like, you know, years ago, Prospects were fighting ten times in, in a year. You know, no one's doing that now. Do you know what I mean? Which, like, uh, I think fighters nowadays. I read someone, someone tweeted it. Uh, one of the boxing guys, I think, it was Steve Kim. Uh, he said boxers are overtrained and underfought, and he's spot on. Fighters aren't boxing enough. They're just not fighting it regularly enough because I think what has happened is fighters are earning so much for one fight. That in order to pay the fighter that much money, it's got to be they have to be on a certain level of a card. Where if they weren't paying, so but then how do you tell a fighter, oh, you shouldn't be earning as much as that? You, you can't negotiate a fighter to take less for for a fight once he's negotiated himself up there and he's earning X amount. So, but is that, it would be actually better for him in the long run if he was fighting more often, you know, because for his development and his experience and everything, but. Then again, but then it's like, I, I don't know. The Is it the risk of losing then? Because it seems that boxing at the moment, look at Eubank, um, lost to Liam Smith um, two weeks ago. I mean, I read an article that said his reputation is in, in tatters. I don't think that's the case. I think Eubank can come back. If he wins that rematch, which, you know, there's a quite a likelihood that he can. Is it back in the frame? I do think at the moment with boxing, if you lose a fight, it seems that you know, you're dead and buried. I don't think it was back then. Oh, no. Well, or was it? Well, it's, you know, man, the, listen, but people wrote you off. You know what I mean? But, you know, you're as good as your last fight. That's a bad thing and a good thing. It means a bad thing because you get written off after a loss, but it's a good thing because you come back with a good win and you're back up there. You know, so it's the only thing is, once you've had the loss, people don't want to really fight you then because they know you're still a hard fight, still could lose. I've got the ranking then. Yeah. Don't even get the kudos if they beat you now because your, you know, your, your share price is low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it stocks and shit, you know. But... I don't know. It's. Uh, I think. I, I do. I do think boxers not fighting often enough is is really hurting boxing, and it's hurting the boxers. But like you say, it's. It's. An, I don't know what the solution is because how do you convince a fighter to fight more to take a fight, which could be a which. And look, you could say, well, you should win. Of course, you should win, but you, you might not. People lose fights; they should win. So you're going in, or you, or you, or you, you know, you win, but you break your hand, yeah. and then you miss out on the big fight. So it's like, I don't know what the solution is. Um, in terms of this card as well, um, what fight other than Azim are you looking forward to the most on there? I mean, Sims, Junior and, and Chelly, that seems like a right spiteful mix, that. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a tough fight for Chelly. I mean, he's uh, he's proved himself, to, you know, so far. He, we know he's battle hard and we know he's game. Um, and he's decent, but Sims, uh, the, the few times I've seen him box, I thought he looked sharp, you know, he had a real fluid, smooth, uh, classy style, style about him, so um, good skill set. I, I think it's a tough fight for Chelle, but you know, we know he'll, 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 it won't be for the one to try in. They are great though, I'll be honest. During fight week, Chelly's always a serious candidate. Um, moving on quickly before you go, um, AJ yesterday returning against Franklin. What do you make of the opponent? I, for one, think it's a great opponent to come back with. Actually, I've seen your Instagram that mentions that you believe this is the right opponent for AJ to come back for. Definitely, because, you know, he's uh, he's credible, he's durable, he's only lost once in a di disputed decision to Dillian. Um, it'll, it'll be better for that fight. So I think this is a better Franklin than the one that fought Dillian because he's the, the, the uh, experience of that fight. Um, you know, we, we don't know where Joshua's head is at. You know, we don't know, like he said, his motivation, his money. Are you surprised by that? Well, it's professional boxing, you know, but, but what I mean is money... We, look, if he goes in and blasts him out or he's just too good, that's fine. But if it gets, starts getting hard in there after five or six rounds and actually Franklin's durable, he's stood up to a few and he's coming back at him, you know, money isn't a great motivator when you've already got loads of money. 
you know, you know. So now, if it's if it's if he's if he's got a burning ambition to be world champion again, and to prove all the all the naysayers wrong and all that, well then, that that that's that is that is a motivation. But if if you're already a multi-millionaire many times over, and it starts to get really tough and hard in there, money's not the motivator. Um, are you concerned with the level of? Well, the, the multiple changing of training teams, or is it that Joshua's trying to find his feet again, trying to find what works? Look, the, the, you can say, look, it freshens things up, and that might he might need that bit of freshness because he's been a pro a long time now. He's had some great highs. He's earned a lot of money. So to kind of uh, motivate him, he needs to freshen things up a little bit. That's one side of the argument. The other side of the argument is... He's got to go over to a, another place. He hasn't been there before. He's got to get in sync with a new trainer. This new trainer will try to put his imprint on things and he's got to work on that. And it's, you know, it's almost like starting again a little bit. So, you know, uh, positives and negatives. Um, uh, quickly moving on as well. Um, yeah, with, with this fight as well, is it a lose-lose for Joshua finally? I don't think it's a lose-lose. If, if, if he goes in and blasts Franklin out in a couple of rounds, then people will say, wow. You know, he, 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 that was an undefeated guy who fought Dillian going into the Dillian fight. It was a close fight. So, no, that it's not lose-lose, but it's, um, you know, if, 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 if it's a struggle for him, people will, you know, people will be knocking him again, won't they? Finally, do you reckon AJ wins the world title again? Just quickly on. don't know. I don't know. You know, I, I look. It's hard up there now, isn't it? It's hard. Hard to say. you got, like, you know, Fury and Usyk. Like, I don't know, I don't know.